right, our topic today is experimental probability of compound events. So let's take a look just a second at this title. Remember, experimental means you have some data. So that's going to be something that we're going to be working with. You've got data to work with. And compound events, that means that more than one thing is happening. Compound events means you're going to be doing two or more events, okay? Um, this would be like spinning a spinner and rolling a number cube or flipping a coin and spinning a spinner. So more than one thing is happening here. So what, what we um, usually see when we have experimental probability is we see some data. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and we're gonna have a little situation. It says, Jessica is conducting an experiment using two bowls of marbles. She reaches into each bowl, draws a marble, records the results, and returns the marble to its bowl. She repeats the experiment for each bowl 20 times. That's probably going to be important. Her results are shown in the table below. So mind you, she's actually done this experiment, and you can see that here. Um, it says that bowl one, a red was drawn eight times, a purple was drawn four times, a blue was twice, a green was six times. Remember, frequency just means the amount that something occurs or how many times something happens. So when we're talking about frequency, that means that a red happened eight times, purple happened four times. Bowl two, a white, the frequency was six, gray was six, black three times, and orange five times. So notice we have two events. We have bowl one, and we have bowl two. So two different things are happening here. You're drawing from two different bowls. That's what makes this compound, okay? So let's say that we wanna find the experimental probability of drawing a red from bowl one and a white from bowl two. Okay, a red from bowl one and a white from bowl two. So there's two things that ha that's happening. That means we're going to need two fractions. And all we're going to do is use our data. Okay, so that's, I think, the biggest takeaway. Use the data. It is experimental, which means we're looking at what did happen. So red was eight. They drew a red eight times out of the bowl out of 20 times. Remember, it told us that in the question. And the second one would be white, and they drew a white um, marble six times out of the 20 times that they drew this marble. And remember, you already know how to calculate compound probability. So you take, if there's two events, that's two fractions, and you multiply them. So to multiply fractions, you know you've got them. It's top times top and bottom times bottom. So 8 times 6 is going to be 48 over 20 times 20, which is going to be 400, okay? So the probability of drawing a red from the first bowl and a white from the second bowl would be 48 out of 400, and you could simplify that. There's probably many things you could divide that by, so you could simplify that and then get, you know, a nice fraction um, for a final answer. But the main thing that I want us to focus on is did we use the data? Okay, so we did. We used the data that they gave us here, and we used the data that they gave us here, and those are the things that influenced our fractions. So um, let's try another example. Let's try another example, and this time let's do the probability of a blue from the first bowl and the probability of a black from the second bowl. Okay. Remember, all we have to do is use their data. So we're not talking about what should happen. We're talking about what actually did happen. So they drew a blue two times out of the 20 total trials. And they drew a black three times out of the 20 total trials. And to find compound probability, you multiply your fractions. So top times top would be 6 and bottom times bottom would be 400. So again, we've got a pretty interesting number. We always say that probability answers aren't always friendly numbers. They're not friendly fractions, but we can definitely probably do something with this. So I think we can divide these both by two for sure. We'll just start there. Um, six divided by two gives me three, and 400 divided by two gives me 200. Um, and I think that's all we can do with that. So this would be our final answer. Um, three out of 200. So that, that's probably not very likely. So the, the likeliness of you drawing a blue and then drawing a green, I would say 
would be not very likely. Three out of 200 is not the best odds. So that's not maybe something you would, you know, assume that would happen. Um, remember, we used their data. So they told us that it happened. They did um, this trial 20 times. So the main thing that we have to remember is we've ha we have to pull some information out of the question. Had we kind of, you know, glazed over this information right here, we really wouldn't have had anything else to, um, to draw from. I do want to make one, one small connection for just a second. Let's say we didn't know, you know, that this had happened 20 times. Um, that, that's going to happen eventually. So I do want to maybe work one more question, and um, that way we can kind of go from there as far as what if they don't give us the number of trials. So I'm going to put this one away, and we will do another one real quick. And um, this guy is pretty much very similar to the other. Um, this, this person's name is Steven, and they have two different spinners. You can see spinner one here and um, spinner two here. So it says he spun each spinner several times and recorded the results in the tables below. So red, orange, yellow, green happened eight, four, two, and six times. And then on the second spinner, blue happened twice, purple happened twice, black happened once, and white happened five times. So it's super interesting here. They did not give us a total number of spins. So if they don't give us a total number of spins, could I maybe add all of these together and figure out how many total? Because again, we don't know. Okay, so let's see, eight and two, that's 10, and four and six is 10. So that this actually happened. They spun this guy 20 total times. And then let's kind of go over here. If we wanted to figure out a total number that they spun this, let's see, five plus one is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So they only spun spinner two twice. <laughs> they spun um, spinner one 20 times, and they spun spinner two 10 times, okay? So that's probably going to change as we figure out some of our probabilities here. So let's say we want to find the probability of spinning a yellow on spinner one, and then spinning, let's say, white on spinner two. Okay, so two events means two fractions. So we should definitely kind of know that at this point. On spinner one, a yellow happened twice out of 20 times. So this is super important. So, um, and then as we go over to spinner two, a white happened five times out of 10 times. So that's gonna make our fraction for that one a little bit different. But again, we're going with the experimental. So actually what happened? How many times did they do each of these? Okay, so um, to find your compound probability, you do top times top. So two times five is gonna be 10. And bottom times bottom. So 20 times 100 is gonna be 200. And I can actually simplify this guy. I can divide them both by 10. Um, and 10 divided by 10 is gonna give me one. And 200 divided by 10 is going to give me 20. So the probability of this happening is 1 in 20 trials. So if I did this experiment 20 times, one of the times it would happen, um, which is still pretty unlikely. Definitely not impossible, but unlikely for sure.